Hi, buddy. Hi. Oh, you come over. You ready to ride? Turn out first, maybe? Oh, what a good boy. Yeah. Welcome back guys to this week's vlog. I'm here with Happy, he's eating his dinner. And I am gonna get ready to make his bags, but I'm excited this week. I think we're gonna jump today in this vlog. We'll see. Most of the jumps are set pretty low out in the arena, so I'm hopeful that we can do that. And I can show you a little bit of what we learned in our second lesson, which went really well, and we got a lot of really good feedback. So I'm excited to show you guys, and let's get to it. You gonna get a snack? Okay. Come on. See, that's the footing that's in there. It's all like strings. And then see, there's some cross rails, a small little vertical, another cross rail, a huge oxer that we won't be doing. We did jump an oxer in our last lesson. And yeah, what do you think? We might get a roll. Sometimes he gets distracted. Distracted. You say you don't feel like rolling now. All right. So in our lesson, we worked a lot on transitions and keeping happy bend to the inside and off my inside leg, um, especially to the left because that's where he likes to bulge out and fall. So that's what we'll work on today. We're gonna do what we did in our lesson, which was lots of um, transitions and really only ever did walk to canter transitions, never trot to canter. And basically bending to the inside, getting him off my inside leg, getting the inside hind engaged, and then going into the upward transition or vice versa into the downward transition. So that's what I'll work on today. And then depending on how we both feel, I would like to work on some fences too, just because it helped him in the lesson to stay a little more focused and not be bored and bullying me, which is something she brought up that she thinks Happy's a bit of a bully with me sometimes. And you know, Oh, now he rolls. I can't even zoom in over there, but now he rolls now that I'm gone. But yeah, um, I do actually think he's a little bit of a bully, so I'll talk about that more uh, in a little bit. I try to sneak up on him. He's getting a nice little sunbathe and roll in. Oh, he's safe. He feels so good. He doesn't ever lay in the other round pin or sand pit, but he likes this one. It's so funny. He's ready. Pepper. He's all anxious. For what reason? We don't know. He is though. He's ready to go. Welcome back to the voiceover. Oh my goodness. He was nuts for this ride. So I went directly into the arena. We didn't do our warm up walk around the trail because I didn't want to have to carry my Pivo with me. And I don't know if he was just really fresh because I didn't ride him the day before this, so he had a day off. If he was anxious about riding in the arena because of the lesson was the last time we rode in there and it was very um, challenging for him or what was going on. But he was so fresh and spicy. and. It's so different for me from how he used to be because I used to start rides and have to gallop this horse to get him moving. And the past like several rides, since we started riding this way with his pull up and balance more on his hind end, he has been absolutely insane, I feel like, when we start. And I'm laughing because it used to scare me if he would act like this, but now I'm kind of trying to just tell myself like it's awesome to have a horse that's forward and moving even if he's trying to evade me by getting behind the vertical and behind the bit, which is his his thing. Plus this, the bouncing and jumping and rearing and all that. So I tried to correct him when he did that, and he does actually start to do this more at the canner, 
when I tried to candor him right, and I just made sure to stop him and just say, no, this is not acceptable, and, like, you gotta focus and we gotta move, but you can't be going nuts like you're going. We gotta be a team. We can't just be a happy against Rebecca situation. But yeah, he eventually settled and he stopped taking baby steps at the trot and evading my um, rain aids with his head and he settled down and got to work. So a few of the things that the coach mentioned to me, now this person that I took lesson, a lesson with um, this past week was the actual owner of the writing program. I was had to take a lesson with one of her assistants the first time because she was sick. So she mentioned that she thought, first of all, that Happy was a really nice mover at the trot, which I was really, um, it made me feel really good. She felt like his canter was a little bit pacey behind, but and he was a little bit disconnected, his hind to his front, but it was something that we could work on with keeping his head up and having him learn to balance back on his hind end. Um, and she thought that I was a pretty decent rider to be able to get him going the way that he's going and to have pretty good timing with corrections and um, support and all those kinds of things, which I was really happy to hear just because I was very, very scared to take lessons with anybody because of my prior experience with lessons and basically being made to feel like I was a really bad rider and Happy was just a really garbage horse. So I told her all this and she was like, oh no, the only thing that's really an issue with him is he just paces a little behind, but she's like, he's a project and he's, he'll be fun to, to work with. And I feel like I can already see by just giving him more structure with my rein and leg eggs that he is starting to really, he really apparently, I feel like, enjoys this because he looks to me way better than he's ever looked um, just with the shortening of the rein and asking for a little bit more bend and stepping under himself than how we were riding before. Like, he has more structure, so I feel like he's excelling a little bit more. So it was all really good feedback that I got from her. The only thing that I didn't really jive with her advice was possibly putting hind shoes on to help him get better timing and possibly weight his hind end so it comes up under him more, which I don't really think I'm going to do just because I really like him barefoot and I like how he looks barefoot and I think that those issues that we're seeing can be fixed just by riding with a shorter rein and getting him to be more on his hind end as opposed to having a constant stretch, which I think just based off of his confirmation put him into a situation where he was always on his forehand. So I'm going to give him a couple more months, probably finish out the year without shoes and see how he does. His feet look great, so I don't think there's any soundness issues with it, but I, um, I just don't really want to put shoes back on unless he really, really needed them. But yeah, so he warmed up really, really nicely, and look at how great he looks. He looks super fancy. Um, some of my spookiness came back when he started to canter right, but we just worked on it um, and got him to relax again and stop being a little bit of a, a brat.
Okay, and here we started into the canner and he got real spicy and irritated that I was asking him to bend right. He gets very opinionated about it and I'm not, I don't feel like I'm asking him like to crane his head in. I'm just asking for a little give and he decides he doesn't want to give so he gets really spicy. And I've started to feel like recently that when he gets flat in this arena, he has to get flat and pace. And when he paces is when he can like really take off. And so part of me feels like considering after watching this video that he can canter, I do feel a little bit like the pacing and the getting flat is just his like quote unquote power move to take control of the situation. And I guess you can philosophize it any way you want that he's, you know, being a brat or he's um, finding it too difficult. So he's trying to get out of the task, whatever. But I think something with Happy that I've never worked on is when we're in the arena and we're riding, we're working. We're not there to play, we're not there to be silly, we're there to work. And that's a new concept that we have started with after these lessons is, if I ask you for something, I mean it, and I mean for it to be done correctly. I don't mean for you to take off and just do whatever you feel because I ask you for more pace. You decide that more pace means flatten and pace actually pace, not, you know, go faster. So to the right, this is the best canner I think I've ever had in this arena to the right with him. And what I did was basically every time he started to pace with me and get flat, we just stopped, took a second to breathe. And then I asked him again to walk to canner. And that was something that we did a lot in our lesson on Thursday was walk to canner, walk to trot, and just getting him to bend leg yield into the transition and then lift and canter. And I think it really has been helping him to get a little bit more um, going and understanding the canter. And there I corrected him because he also has a tendency when we do a downward to just kind of fizzle into like a very slow flat trot. And that was something we worked on in our lesson, which was when I asked for downward, let's march forward into a very forward trot. So I just got after him a little bit to remind him that downwards do not always mean just come to a flat halt and do, you know, whatever you want. It's to lift and continue lifting. And I know this is hard work and it's, it'd be hard for me. It'd be, I always compare it to having to do a plank pose for however many minutes, but I think he has the, the, the concept. I think he should be able to do this and I don't think it's too, too difficult. So it's just how we're working now. And here's another walk to to canter that went really, really, really well. I was super happy with this. And the left lead canter just feels so much more balanced than the right lead at most most of the time. So yeah, this was our flat warm up for the day, working on the things that we had learned in our lesson on Thursday. And then after our flat work, we started to do a little bit of jumping. So in my last lesson, my one-on-one -on -one lesson, we just trotted into fences and cantered out and then brought him back to a trot and just kind of kept doing that. 
Um, you'll see me kind of give him a tap over the fence because you know, well, if you've been watching, if you haven't, Happy does not always give the best effort, especially over cross rails or something small. So the crop to the butt is just to be like, hey, buddy, like pick it up and let's canter away from this instead of just like stepping over the fence. And it did help a lot in the lesson, and I feel like it helped a lot here just to get him to like pay attention and actually use himself and jump as opposed to what he normally does when he feels like jumps aren't big enough. So that's what I was doing with that. And then what you're we basically doing was coming off of a long a long corner and then coming around and doing a short corner and getting him just off of my leg around that corner and bending and then engaging over the fence. So that was a lot of what um, we worked on with these jumps and just trotting it. I didn't canter anything um, in my lesson and I didn't canter anything in this ride. I just think that the trotting is giving him enough time to really focus on what he needs to do and then also it just I think it's going to be better for him. I feel like this is how we should have started jumping with Stephanie because Happy had done some jumping before I bought him, but not very much. But we just kind of went into it as if he knew what he was doing, and I just don't think he ever really learned how to jump properly with proper form. He gets it right, but he doesn't get it right all the time. So this is definitely a better way of getting him to jump better with better form and and to basically approach the fences better and exit the fences better. So that's what we worked on on this ride with our over fences work and it went really well. He was really on it and he was really focused on what I was asking so I was pretty happy with this portion of the ride. And I think in my next ride, I'm going to be working more on this left lead to trot transition. I think if I did some simple changes, it might make it easier because every time I came off of that fence, he landed on the left lead and then paced into the trot. And I think we need to stop doing that. So I will work on that in our next rides. But that kept coming up. And since I wasn't really planning to work on that, I was really working on this um, exercise. I didn't really want to start working on something else. This was kind of towards the end of my ride. So I do plan to work on that left lead to trot transition just because for whatever reason it was causing him to pace and that is not something that I want him to be doing when we break to the trot. So um, one or two steps of pace is okay. I understand that that's um, a default gate for him but I didn't like that it took several strides of him pacing to finally get back into the trot. So that will be something I work on. But I was really happy with him doing this, and I even felt like that vertical was a little high for me to be trotting in. I know it's not. But as I was riding, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so big. But I just sat and relaxed and trusted that he would get me through it, and he did. And he did a really great job over it. And the first time he whacked it pretty hard, but the second time we went over it, he put in a better effort and jumped over it a little bigger. And, um, He's learning. He's just, it's all going to be a learning process for him with getting a little bit more fancy and writing a little bit more correctly.
All right, I'm getting eaten by mosquitoes, so hopefully this goes okay, but he was really good. He started out really spicy, as you saw. I think it's a blend of being a little bit anxious about riding with his pull up and shorter reins and a little bit more confined, but I think it's also just happy. So what the coach said was that she felt like happy was a little bit of a bully to me and how he acts, like how he is very behind my leg, doesn't really pay much attention to what I'm asking of him, and then gets a little bit sassy, tossing his head, doing the things that we've all seen him do in my vlogs. He gets a little sassy and she thinks that he's just kind of taking a little bit of advantage of me. So we were riding with a little bit more um, emphasis on not having that happen and having him focus more and listen more and not ignore my aids. She suggested that I ride in spurs to help so that I'm not constantly having to like kick or use my crop as much. I can just do smaller adjustments because she said that my timing for a lot of corrections and like assistance with him was really good and so spurs would be more helpful. So I did order some of those. Also, we worked on getting him to go over the fences and not just peter out and actually work. So you saw me today smack him when he went over the cross rail and just decided to like fall over it. So he got better about that. And we've just been working a lot on trotting in, cantering out, then going into a trot again and just kind of turn, doing a lot of turns to the cross rails and smaller fences. That's kind of what we've been working on and I think that's what we'll keep working on until my next lesson. So yeah, that was our ride. He was good. He finished up really nicely and I felt like was really listening much better. And I'm getting more confident about trotting over things that are bigger than cross rails because I have to. I had to trot an oxer, a two foot oxer, but I had to trot an oxer in my lesson and it stressed me out a little bit. But he's getting better about it. We're gonna have the spurs in a week or so and then we might try a different bit, not mouthpiece. I really like his mouthpiece, but we're gonna try a different um, shank kind of thing like either I don't want to call it shank I'm from the western world but like something that might be less than like the loose ring constantly spins so we're gonna see if we can find something that has a little bit more quote-unquote leverage to help him a little bit with his head placement and not always trying to fall on the forehand so much so yeah those are the changes from my last lesson and that's kind of what we worked on today was what we worked on in my last lesson and I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog because things are changing and that's why Happy's getting all stressed out about our rides because things are changing. So anyways, um, let me finish cooling him out and then I'll recap at the very very end. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. Happy's all tucked in. I just got to put his fly mask on but he got a rinse and he got liniment on his legs and all over his body. He did his carrot stretches. He's been working on his treat ball while I put everything away. Oh, there you go. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the vlog. I hope that what we're doing makes sense to everyone because it's a pretty big, big change from how we used to ride. But I think it will make Happy's riding life a lot easier in mine too because it'll be a little bit more clear as to what is expected of him. Yeah. So thank you guys so much for watching. I can't wait to film our next vlog. Bye guys.